Following the ablation, they said it wouldn't really be clear for up to three months how it went and if it was successful or not. And I knew initially, immediately, yes, but then I knew my watch was still going off. There was just a sense deep down and based on the report as well that the chances are that I'm going to continue having atrial fibrillation and it is what it is. And it was a difficult time though, because I remember struggling with the fact that friends, and I know people, there's nothing bad or wrong people can say because people don't really know what to say, but I remember them saying to me like, oh, wishing you well soon and I hope you recover quickly. And I guess there's recovering from the operation, but I think deep down there was a sadness about, it's like a, a bump along the road. It's okay, great, if I'm better from the ablation, my heart condition's still there. I'm still, according to the doctors, gonna need this heart transplant at some stage. And it just wasn't adding up. I remember just trying to process that. And any time someone said to me at the time, recover soon, it just didn't feel like I was gonna, yes, recovery from the operation, but that doesn't mean I'm now fixed or it's like a broken leg, it will be healed and then it's done. Not that I would want to wish to have a broken leg either, but it was just this, I just remember the relationship to myself and feeling quite sad about that, if that's the right word, and challenged dealing with that process of going, yeah, okay, great, the ablation, and obviously we hope that's been successful, but deep down I don't think it has been. And yeah, that real sense of, well, it's, I know it's a normal, natural thing to just say, I hope you feel better or you recover quickly, but it's still the gravity of everything, I think, was still quite overwhelming at the time. And that was something I think was very difficult to deal with. Whilst I've continued to feel better after the ablation, it still very much felt like this kind of two steps forward, one step back. It's in the, the evolution and the journey, and whilst I do feel good at some stages, it then, yeah, it's just all part of this bigger picture of what was going on. And even if that had cleared up, it's, yeah, that, yeah. The sense of two steps forward, one step back. And I was really keen to feel better at that stage. And it had just been going on for so long. And also not being able to sleep was really challenging. The amiodarone as well was causing me to have so many like crazy dreams. I'm quite a crazy dreamer normally. Coming back to present day now, December, 2022, I'm still dreaming, but the amiodarone we stopped a few months ago. And I do feel, I do feel different. Also at the time when I was having it, my appetite had gone. It's just, again, the side effects of the medication as well. I try not to read the instructions on the side because I know there's that whole, you read something and then you think you're going to get it. So I, I trust the doctors to tell me what I need to do and then let it get on with it. It was around mid-December 2021. I had my next transplant assessment and it was the first echocardiogram, the ECG, that is the heart monitor. And on, on your watch, there's a one lead ECG, which can give you some results, but this is a 12 lead ECG where they put different leads across your body to see how strong the pulse is and what the pulse is from the heart. And it was the first one I'd had since the ablation. And so that was a quite a say watershed moment, but I think I knew deep down what it was gonna show. And ultimately it showed that there is still what's called an atrial flutter or the atrial fibrillation is continuing. Again, stable for now. And fortunately, again, in the same way, if you want to go on the list, you can, but there was no material change. It felt like I was stable enough to continue to say no. And I shared with them that I wanted to go to the mountains for the winter or for as much time as I could. And they agreed as long as I had the right insurance and I was, you know, responsible, reasonable with myself, then I could go. And so it was a good end of the year. And I think though, in my head, I do remember very clearly saying, if I get to the mountains and I can't ski or do what I want to do, then I'd get back home very quickly. And I put myself on the list immediately because that was a big thing. And bear on how I'd been at the beginning of December, it was definitely a question mark if that was the right decision to go and what I should do. But looking back, I made the right decision. It was interesting because COVID was kicking off again. It's crazy as we're now December 2022, thinking back to a year ago, how France, they made an announcement on the 17th of December, if you weren't there by midnight on the 17th, that you were not allowed into France. And that ban took place from then until the 14th of January. So it's like a month that you weren't allowed in. And months earlier, I'd booked my flight for the 17th of December. And I just remember that, look, I've made the decision. I've had the all clear from the doctors for now. If I can go, 
at least if I could go, if I need to come back, I'll come back. But I'm going to go and that's the plan. And I remember literally we landed at 10 o'clock in the evening and there was traffic from Geneva because we landed in Switzerland going into France. And I remember all of us saying to the driver, just as long as you get us over the border by midnight, it, it was a 20 minute walk or something. We need to walk, we'll walk the 20 minutes. You can come and pick us up afterwards, but you've got to get us in. And we were in by about half past 11, I think it was in the end. And then just how crazy the world was closing down again and lockdowns and whatever. Whereas being, I thought, outside in the mountains, it's, it's a great place to be. And I remember when I landed the 18th, I did, I, I said, I'll take it easy. I'll just go out for a few runs on the slopes and see how I feel. And it just felt so good. And I think there's something, mentally, there's a lot the doctor said as well at each stage, making the decision to have the heart transplant, you need to be in the right mindset and headspace to make that decision. And similarly, when I had my defibrillator put in, I was really resisting it for a while and didn't want it because I think the overwhelm and it felt very permanent to put this device in me and the reality of everything. And when I then did decide to go ahead and do it, I think it, it definitely made the process easier and allowed me to adjust perhaps quicker and better. Yeah, I, I had my first day on the slopes and felt great and was so grateful to be able to spend the time out there. I called it 40 days and 40 nights because of Brexit another reason why you can't stay in Europe for a certain amount of time. So I was able, though, to be there for 40 days and 40 nights until mid-February. And to be honest, that year then, up until most recently, things were going really well. And I had a really great time. I felt really good for it. And again, the exercise. This is what I'm going to say the doctors, despite my BMP protein level, it had been at 14. Again, it had come down now to 5,000 or so on paper. If I meet also more junior younger doctors, they can't believe that I'm doing and active and what I'm doing. And I think some of them are a bit envious as well. <laughs> uh, and I feel very grateful. Had I made the decision to go on the list, then would I be in the middle of the process? And sitting here now, I feel good. I guess my benchmark or my level of expectation has been reset. What's a good day? Being able to get up, being able to breathe, being able to speak to people, being able to have my clients, being able to travel, all of these things, it's a good quality of life. And I remember back to earlier on in the recordings we've been doing today, talking about being bedridden and not being able to walk and very challenging times. I've experienced all of that, but I know right now it feels the right thing for me. We're all on our own journey. We've got to make those decisions ourselves. I have my difficult days and again, we'll talk a bit more about that today. But for then, it felt like very right that I'd made that right decision and I was there. And I then continued for the rest of kind of April. I went back again and enjoyed being out in the mountains, which was really great. Also navigating around from doctor's appointments perspective, April again came round back in the UK and things were great and stable again. From the 17th of December, it just feels like this continuingly feel better, doing really well and in a really great space. And so I'm really grateful that I was able to do yeah, everything I wanted to do. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out the British Heart Foundation, Cardiomyopathy UK and Save Nine Lives for more information. Why not comment on the video, tell me what you think or ask a question and subscribe to the channel to continue to follow my journey.